Hello, everybody. Good afternoon, and welcome to the College of the Holy Cross for what is a very special day here on the Hill, as we officially introduce the 19th head coach in the history of our storied Holy Cross men's basketball program, Dave Paulson. I'm honored to be joined here today by Coach Paulson and our Associate Vice President of Intercollegiate Athletics, Kit Hughes. We'd also like to extend a special welcome to Coach Paulson's wife, Kathy, and also to the President of Holy Cross, Vincent Rougeau, and all other members of the Holy Cross community here today. We're also happy to welcome our local media alongside all those tuning in on our live stream on YouTube today. A three-time Patriot League Coach of the Year and two-time Division III National Coach of the Year, Coach Paulson brings 27 years of collegiate head coaching experience. He has won four Patriot League regular season titles, two Patriot League tournament titles, and the 2003 Division III National Championship. Paulson takes over a Holy Cross program that has participated in 13 NCAA tournaments, competed in two NCAA Final Fours, won NCAA and NIT championships, and boasts NBA legends and Hall of Famers among its alumni. Today, we'll start with remarks from our Athletic Director, Kit Hughes, and then we'll also hear from Coach Paulson. After that, we'll welcome questions for both Kit and Coach Paulson from the media. Without further ado, I'm happy to introduce Director of Athletics, Kit Hughes. Thank you, Sarah, and uh, thank you, everybody, for being here. What a great day to be a crusader. Uh, before I get to introducing our, our guest of honor, there, there are certainly a few additional people I just wanted to take a moment to recognize. Uh, first off, I want to thank our players um, you know, for their support and trust and communication throughout this process. I could not, could not have asked for you to handle this any better than you have, and I'm so excited for what's next for each of you. We're all here for you. And I know that the best is yet to come for Crusader men's basketball. I want to thank the coaches and athletic directors across the country who I had the opportunity to speak with over the last few weeks. Whether expressing interest in the position yourself or sharing support for someone else, I appreciated your time and enthusiasm for the position at Holy Cross. Throughout these conversations and our process in general, it was reinforced to me just how special and exciting an opportunity Holy Cross basketball represents in the basketball community. Thank you. I want to thank all members of the Holy Cross alumni community who stepped forward to show your support of our program and our student athletes during these challenging times. As I've said before, this is your program. And I'm grateful and motivated to know that there's nothing we cannot accomplish here on Mount St. James when we work together. Your legacy and rich history and the rich history of Holy Cross basketball is exactly why this is such a highly sought after position and why there's such strong belief that this is a program that can, should, and will win. That this is not just a good job, but a great job. I'd like to particularly recognize Lauren Davis of the, the class of 1990 and Ron Perry of the class, class of 1980 for their close counsel, participation, and support in our process. You're both tremendous ambassadors for our program, and I'm so thankful for your support. I'd like to thank the members of my team here on campus who assisted in the search process, most notably Senior Associate Athletic Director Nick Smith, whose work these last few weeks has been nothing short of superb. Thanks, Nick. Additionally, thanks to Faculty Athletic Representative Sarah Petty, Vice President for Enrollment Cornell Lassane, as well as members of campus leadership for your time and support as we work to identify the next leader of Crusader men's basketball. Particular thanks to President Rougeau here today for your support and belief in us through this process. As I shared with many, this was not something where I was going to lock myself away and make a decision solely on my own. This hire called for a robust, competitive, and inclusive process that leveraged the strength of our community to find the perfect fit for our program. We were going to do this consistent with our values and mission as an institution and truly work for and with each other. I'm so grateful for everyone's support. Lastly, I'd like to thank Dave, Kathy, and their daughters, Claire, Sarah, and Molly, for believing in Holy Cross, Crusader Basketball, myself, and our leadership team at the college, that this is the best possible position for your family that aligns with your own family values, the best opportunity for coach to resume what has already been a remarkable head coaching career. I'd also like to thank my family for their patience and understanding as I worked relentlessly through this process. I know I've been a bit distracted lately, but I'm always grateful for your love and support. So why Dave Paulson? 
As we began this process, we sought out to find the ideal leader based on a few very specific criteria that we felt important to a fresh start for our program. We prioritized head coach experience, a connection to our area and conference, as well as a deep understanding and appreciation of what makes Holy Cross special, a true belief in our mission as a college and the impact that basketball can have on our student athletes and community. I've been taught that often the best predictor of future success is indeed past success. And we look for someone with a demonstrated track record of successfully building both championship programs and championship caliber people. Someone who understood that building a team and a program are two different things and that our program would be built comprehensively with the support of many both on and off campus. Someone who could build robust, genuine and lasting relationships with students, staff, faculty and our alumni, as well as the Worcester community. This place has always been about people, about maximizing our strengths, about serving others. Our next leader needed to understand those things. And in all of these ways, Dave Paulson distinguished himself. He not only met and exceeded, uh, he not only met every criteria that we established, but he exceeded them. He's exactly what is needed for in this moment in our history as a program. And I'm filled, thrilled to welcome he and Kathy today to Worcester and to the Holy Cross campus. Crusader Nation, it's my distinct honor to introduce to you the 19th head coach in Holy Cross men's basketball history, Dave Paulson. Thank you. Um, I'd like to thank, first of all, President Rougeau for the opportunity to join the Holy Cross community, to Kit Hughes, members of the search committee, the members of the uh, Alumni Council, uh, all the people I met during the interview process uh, for this wonderful opportunity. I am uh, overcome <clears throat> with excitement and emotion uh, to have the chance to join the Holy Cross community. Uh, I want to thank Keith Ergo. Um, head coach at Fordham, uh, Ed Cole, the director of athletics at Fordham, and the Fordham community for uh, two great years in these past two years. I think I've learned and grown, uh, and it was great to be back at a Jesuit community uh, for those two years and really see how you can have excellence on the court, in the classroom, at a place uh, like, like Fordham and very much what, what Holy Cross is all about. I like to thank my family. Uh, my daughters, Claire, Sarah, and Molly, uh, they have been scouring the internet, Twitter, to see where their dad was going to end up. Um, I called Claire out of the blue. Where are we moving to? No, Claire's not that. Uh, what did you put on my visa the other day? So, um, but, uh, you know, daughters of coach, they, they've moved. They've seen the ups. They've seen the downs. And I'm very, very blessed to have three great daughters. Um, all right, I'm going to be really tough, OK? Just so we're clear. <laughs> all right, guys on the team. But I want to thank my wife, Kathy. Uh, she's my best friend. She's been through all the ups and downs. There's no such thing as a weekend. There's no such thing as a night off. Um, signed the memorandum of understanding on Wednesday at, or Tuesday at 5, and I told her I'm leaving tomorrow at 6. I'm coming up to Holy Cross. I want to meet with each one of the guys. She's like, you know, normal people actually have a little transition period <laughs> before they take it. But uh, she's my best friend. Uh, she's a great supporter. We are in the market for our 15th house <laughs> in 31-plus years of marriage. And uh, she hasn't hit the transfer portal yet. I'm shocked. <laughs> And, uh, and, and really, really blessed. Um, why Holy Cross? Uh, Kit and Nick and Kathy and I just came from Bob Cousy's house. Like, are you kidding me? Bob Cousy? Uh, this is a program with so much tradition 
and heritage and success. And uh, it's just an honor to be a part of that. Um, national championships, Patriot League championships, NIT championships, uh, and then student athletes who leave Holy Cross and achieve at a ridiculously high level and go on to positions of leadership across the whole gamut. That's why I chose Holy Cross. Uh, coaches, to be able to go on the George Blaney practice court uh, and the success that he had. My introduction to the Patriot League was R.J. Evans going off for 32 points against us, I think it was. Uh, he's still got a picture he showed me right when I walked in um, to the office, but also Ralph Willard. Um, maybe one of the best coaches. I, I remember my first year at Bucknell coaching against Holy Cross, and it was the very first time I ever felt like I was playing checkers and he was playing chess. Like, like just a, but just such a legacy of great coaches and great teams and great players. I think Holy Cross has distinguished itself as a place that's about excellence. And we want our men's basketball program to have that same quest for excellence as what's going on in the chemistry labs or the econ classrooms. That's what Holy Cross is about. And I, and I believe in the Jesuit mission of education of the whole person. And I really believe that today, intercollegiate athletics is the ultimate experiential laboratory on this campus. I have the best, I will have the best teaching atmosphere of anyone on this campus. Because I get these guys for two, two and a half hours a day, six days a week, six months a year for four years. And we're going to see their highest highs or lowest lows, and we've got teachable moments. And we want to win championships. Make no mistake about it. We want to win Patriot League championships. We want to be regionally relevant. We want to be nationally relevant. But it's a means to an end to a lifetime. The next 40 years is not just about the next four years. Um, the guys on the team. You didn't choose me, but I chose you. And you got to understand, it's about Holy Cross, and I am committed to you guys. It was important to me. My wife said, do you really have to leave tomorrow at 6.30? I'm like, yes, because before we do a press conference, before we do all the pomp and circumstance, I want to meet every single guy and, and not just the surface, hey, how you doing, but find out who you are, okay? And... That's my commitment. I chose you guys. We had a break. Uh, Nick scheduled me from 9.30 to 6. I asked if he was going to let me have a, a sandwich or anything in there, and he said no. Um, <laughs> but I did, I did sneak away for a minute. I called my wife midway through the day, and I said, these are exactly the types of kids I want to coach. And, and I mean that. Um, now, we're going to be about business uh, when we get on the court. Um, but to me, the ability to have a lifelong relationship with student athletes I coach, um, to push them, we're going to be pushed, okay? We're, we're, we're going to demand excellence, but to jump in your lives with two feet, not just about what's going on between the 94 by 50 on the court, but every aspect of your life, that's what we're about. Um, what does it mean to be a Holy Cross basketball player? And what's it going to mean? to be a Holy Cross basketball player. For, for the fans, for the alumni, uh, it's going to be about playing for the name on the front of the jersey every single day. It's going to be about playing with toughness and grit and resilience and yet joy. Okay, um, Quite frankly, some of the films I watched last year, you didn't see a lot of joy on the court. And we're going to restore the joy. We're going to restore the winning. But it's the best game in the world. All right, we're going to play with passion. We're going to play with energy. We're not going to win them all, okay? But we are going to be passionate about pursuing excellence. We're going to be a team that dives on the floor for more loose balls than anyone in the country. We're going to take more charges. We're going to play with a toughness and a resilience and an unselfishness because that's what Holy Cross basketball has been, and that's what we're going to be about. Um, What's it mean to be a Holy Cross basketball player? I think it's critically important that Holy Cross basketball is completely enmeshed on this campus community. All right? And I think that that's something that we are going to refocus our efforts to know that these guys will represent our team with unbelievable distinction on the court, in the classroom, 
uh, supporting other teams in the greater Worcester community. Um, I am unbelievably excited to be the next coach here. I can promise um, I want to welcome everyone. I want to welcome everyone to our practices. We will be visible. We will be engaged with on campus. And I told President Rougeau, I told Kit, my wife and I, we are excited to be back at a place where our family is completely enmeshed with this college community. Uh, so on campus, supporting other teams, supporting uh, concerts and, and things like that. We want to be visible. We want our guys to be visible, want to engage with. We've got a very, very passionate uh, alumni community, a lot of assistant, unofficial assistant coaches. Um, but we're looking forward to engaging with all of our alums and, and welcoming you back. Uh, the passion, the energy, it's one of the things that makes this position really, really, really special. And we want to engage with the greater Worcester community. Uh, this is a great area. Um, my only interactions with Worcester prior to the last few days was driving up that hill, uh, usually in a blizzard in February, playing a game and, and leaving right out the doors afterwards. But just having the chance to get around the community a little bit, it's a great vibrant, thriving community, and we're excited to be a part of it. So um, great time to be a crusader, and uh, thanks, everyone, very much. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Kit. Um, at this time, we will now take questions from the media. So if you have a question, please raise your hand. We have a microphone that Brie will pass out. Um, and when you're called on, please state your name and your affiliation. <clears throat> Start with Jen. Hi, Dave. Jennifer Toland from the Worcester Telegram. Um, it's, it's been nine years since the program has had a winning record. What's it going to take to change that? And, and how long is it going to take to change that? Well, I think what, what it takes to change that is a, is a simpler question and answer than how long. Uh, but I think if you concentrate on the right things, then the length of the time is a little bit shorter than I think some people think. Um, I, I mentioned a little bit, we've we got to make certain that every single time our guys step on the court, that the most important thing is that they're playing for the name on the front of the jersey, and that we're the most connected, cohesive group in the country. That we're playing for each other, we're playing for Holy Cross. And if you do that, uh, that's the first step. I think we have to be a team that prevents losing uh, before you can try to attack winning. Uh, in my experience in all sports, more games are lost than are won by turnovers or poor decisions or maybe not everyone being on the same page or lack of attention to detail or focusing on the scouting report. And, and I think um, if we can just really concentrate on being the best team in America at the things that require no talent. Uh, be a team that doesn't turn the ball over. Be a team that keeps the other team off the foul line. Uh, hold teams to one shot and, you know, not give up second shots. Um, get back and transition. Make sure we're taking good shots, the right shots. We can't guarantee if we're going to knock down the shot or, or miss a shot. You can play great defense and, and, and somebody can get ridiculously hot. But if you concentrate on the things that you can control, um, then you can be a lot better. Um, I think one of the biggest things for all all throughout history, but certainly today's generation of student athletes is the ability to, to move on to the next play. They're going to they're gonna hear this from me ad nauseum, you know, next play, next play. You're going to screw up, uh, and it's, it's so easy for today's student athletes to dwell on the mistakes they made or, or maybe celebrate the successes they had. We've got to really be able to bounce back to the next play. Um, there's a team that won, what, 7-Eleven in the Patriot League last year, and, and I think Given the talent that's returning, it shouldn't be a seven-win team. It, it should be, be capable of winning more than that, um, you know, just by focusing on the things we can control. Uh, obviously, we've, we've got some spots to fill uh, for uh, the upcoming season in terms of on a roster, and so we're already uh, very, very aggressively uh, in that process as well. Um, but I expect to be <coughs> competing for Patriot League championships in the very near future. Questions? Go again. If you want to go again, Jen. <laughs> Jen again. 
Just a little more, and how the interactions were with the returning players, and do you envision the roster remaining intact? Uh, the interactions, as I said, were phenomenal. Uh, these are really, really bright, uh, articulate, dedicated young men. Uh, they're exactly the guys, the types of guys that I want to coach. Um, you know, it was the first, it was the first interaction. Um, and it was the first thing that, to me, uh, a little bit later, we're, we're having our first team meeting, but I wanted to make sure the first introduction was just me one-on-one -on -one for 30 minutes with each guy. Um, and, and really, we didn't talk about much basketball. It was more me getting to know who they were and what's important uh, to them and, and, and what they've liked and what they haven't liked and what you just kind of hear from their perspective. And then this afternoon, uh, we'll, we'll have a team meeting. And then tomorrow, we'll get on the court, you know, and I think – uh, these guys know when you play pickup basketball with another guy, or you find out the character of another player. That, that is the best indicator of who this other person is. He's selfish, he's unselfish, he knows how to play. And I think for us, the ability to get on the court and sweat together and really for me to be able to understand what each guy can do and, and for them to understand who I am and, and how I am as a coach, you know, I think that'll begin the process. So. You know, I think it's too early to know for sure, Jen, in terms of what's going to happen. Uh, but I do know in talking with these guys, um, they're committed to each other. Um, and I think that they really feel connected to Holy Cross. And I think even some of the experiences during the search process has, you know, and the ability to engage with some of the members of the men's basketball alumni community, I think a lot of these guys understand uh, the special place that Holy Cross is and the special place that Holy Cross basketball exists in this universe, but also uh, the outcomes, not only for the next four weeks or four months, uh, but for the next 40 years for, for these guys. It is a life altering experience, the opportunity to play and study at Holy Cross. And so I would hope and, uh, and believe that uh, we're gonna see great continuity uh, with the returning guys. Kevin. I can just, I can just shout it out. Hi, Coach. Kevin Gale, voice of the Crusaders. Welcome to Holy Cross. Thanks, Kevin. Historically, the Heart Center has been a tough place for, for visiting teams to win, something that you mentioned with your Patriot League experience. Beyond just winning basketball games, what's the key to engaging that passion that we've seen in the past here in this building from fans and alums? Well, you know, I, I will always tell our guys, you know, at practice and, and – you know, practicing hard with great energy and passion every single day, that's a skill now that has to be developed. And, and playing the right way is a skill that has to be developed. But I will tell our guys, if somebody goes in the heart center and they sit in the top deck and they're not a fan of either team, who would they want to root for? Are you the type of team that they want to root for where you're playing with passion, you're playing with energy, you're playing unselfishly, you're diving on the floor for loose balls, you're giving every ounce of effort that you have. Um, because if you're that type of team, then the fans are going to come back, whether you win or lose. You know, we want our team to be a type of team where somebody says, that's a group of guys I want to root for. And, and some days you're going to end up on the short end of the, of the uh, score. Um, but I think that's what you have to have. And, um, you know, we live in a world where sacrificing for others is, is a harder, that's a skill. And that's something that doesn't come necessarily naturally. But when you see it, when you see a team that is fully connected and fully passionate, you want to root for that team. I had the great privilege this year of being an assistant coach at Fordham, a place that was picked 11th in the, pay, in the A-10, uh, a school that, Really, to be honest with you, has been a bottom feeder in the Atlantic 10 for the longest time. Uh, finished tied for second, um, won 25 games, and galvanized the entire college community. When I was coaching at George Mason, we used to go to Fordham. We thought it would save time to have the fans introduce themselves to the starting five because nobody was there. <laughs> you couldn't get a seat in Rose Hill Gymnasium this year. And the students would literally line up for two hours beforehand and come. And yes, we're winning, but 
you wanted to root for our guys because I've never been around a group of guys that dove on the floor, played as hard, played with as much emotion. So I think when you do that, uh, the winning takes care of itself and, and, and the fan support and the excitement takes care of itself. Um, and, and that's the goal, and, and, and we hope that that will ha happen really, really quickly. Yeah, well, I think it, you know, um, us getting out and engaging with, with Worcester and, you know, the city and, and the surrounding area, you know, that's what needs to happen first, right? And so, you know, I know that we've, our guys have, have done, you know, quite a bit of, of service in some of our local schools and, and have already done a great job. We have great, they're great role models for the young people in the community. And so that's something we're looking to continue and certainly enhance moving forward. But just getting out and continuing to build relationships. Uh, critically important to what we're doing and you know being out and being recognizable and accessible so that people know that this is a, a place where they're welcome to be and they're, they're they're wanted to be but also just finding opportunities to to serve and so whether that's getting with with youth teams or leagues or, or the schools like I said our alumni community there's so many different pockets that we can engage with and so I think coming up with a, a real plan especially starting up it's conversations coach and I have already started having and, and kind of what that looks like, you know, moving forward and throughout the rest of this spring and, and beyond. You know, I think that's uh, something we're both really excited about. So um, I think that's key first. And then, as he was saying, becoming the kind of team that people want to support, right? And as we do that, I think it's going to be a really exciting time for the program. How soon in the process did they emerge as the front runner? Hmm. That's a good question, John. <laughs> um, you know, Dave's track record, as I talked about earlier, uh, jumped out from immediately, right? It jumps out immediately. I mean, it's kind of undeniable success and certainly somebody wanting to learn more about. And we started to look at some of the criteria we had set out, said, absolutely, this is somebody we need to really dig in on and learn about. Um, but as I told the guys, Right at the beginning, like I knew, I knew what I was looking for. I wanted to know what they were looking for, right? I knew what I was looking for. I wanted to know what our alumni, what they, what they felt, and members of our community, um, so that we could take, you know, I could inform a lot of these conversations I was about to have based on these things. And I wanted it to be an incredibly competitive process because I think that we have, as I said, I think we have a great job, and I think that somebody that's willing to fight through a really competitive process to truly compete for something because they want it so badly. Ultimately, picking that person, that's the kind of person people want to play for. And that's the kind of per person people want to support. And so, yes, Dave was somebody that I, we were looking at very from the beginning, very early, and had a lot of belief in and excitement about. But uh, we were committed to running a really thorough, competitive process, and that's what we did. So at the end of it, he was still there, uh, you know, and still excited and, and uh, you know, engaged. And, you know, at that point, you know, it was clear that he kind of, as I said, it exceeded everything we were looking for. We couldn't have been more excited to, to uh, agree to bring him here to Holy Cross. Ronnie had some. Yeah, yeah Dave, uh, Ron Perry, class of 1980, not to be confused with Ron Perry, class of 1954, <laughs> NIT champs. Um, I was fortunate to be part of the process, and you obviously just following what Kitch just said, you really stood out, your enthusiasm and your passion for the game, the successful track record that you've had, and you also had a strong feeling that you really understood Holy Cross and what Holy Cross has meant to a lot of athletes and what it means going forward. There's a lot of passion all the way around. It's ready to kind of explode on the scene. And one of the questions you were asked, which I'd like people in the room to hear your answer during the process, was your vision uh, for success at Holy Cross. What is your vision for success? And I guess if you could articulate that for the group, I think that would be good because when you answered that question during the process, it resonated with me in terms of how you spoke. Well, I'm trying to remember what I said at that time. <laughs> it's, it, seems, it, seems, it seems like eight, eight months ago through the process. Um, you know, the first thing, the measure of success is, is that I have a relationship with these guys all the way through for the next 40 years so that – uh, and you know some of the guys that I coached in my days at Williams, and, and we stay in touch all the time. 
um, on the phone, text, the group threads, uh, at their weddings, at their, um, you know, find out their job promotion, or their children being born. And that, at the end of the day, that's why I do what I did, uh, th those relationships. And so how I would measure success is, is a relationship that I have with these guys starting tomorrow, but also 30, 40, 50 years down the road. How I measure success is how close-knit these guys are for the next 40 years and how they stay connected with their teammates um, because there's nothing like what you get to do in collegiate athletics. Uh, the sacrifices they make are unparalleled, but the, but the chance to be together and really be a team and bond and go through the ups and downs uh, and, and just, just be so close, uh, I, I just don't think it happens anywhere else. Um, to me, a reasonable expectation is every kid who plays four years for me here at Holy Cross should participate in at least one NCAA tournament. I think that is a, a very valid uh, baseline expectation that with our tradition, with, our, with the, the academic excellence of this institution, with the unbelievable facilities uh, that we have here, with our location in, in just a great footprint geographically to recruit talented student athletes who, who fit at Holy Cross, like every kid, in my opinion, should play in at least one NCAA tournament. Now that's a baseline. We want more than that, okay? But but I think that's a a reasonable expectation uh, for every guy, because that is a is a phenomenal experience, and I think that's one that every guy that plays for me, I want them to have that opportunity to participate in. I think at this time, for the sake of time, we're going to wrap things up. But thank you to everyone for being here today. And thank you once again to everyone who's tuning in on our live stream. We're eager to see everyone back here at the Heart Center this winter. We encourage all fans to make their deposit for season tickets today by visiting GoHolyCross.com slash tickets. Thank you all once again for all of your support of Holy Cross Athletics. And Go Cross Go! Okay. All right. I'm going to down. Jeez. Yeah, it was quick. It was good. Let's get a picture of you too. Okay. With the jersey. Present results.